Many of you know that PCG is extremely powerful inside of Unreal Engine, but as you know, there's actually a free plugin that makes it even more powerful. Now this plugin is free, which is awesome, but it is not beginner friendly. And I have to say that right off the bat, because while you can do absolutely insane things with it, it is still very early on in development. So the documentation and the tutorials for it aren't quite there yet. Now the plugin I'm referring to is PCG EX. Now you might be thinking it's maybe it's PCG Extreme. No, it's Extended Toolkit. Not nearly as cool sounding as PCG Extreme, uh, but maybe they'll change their mind and rename it to PCG Extreme down the line, and then we can have a better time. Now, of course, I'm gonna link the actual plugin in the description. It is available on Fab for free, and also get their example project from their GitHub. You will need to recompile it though, so just be aware of that. Let me show you what the example project has to offer and maybe show you one or two little things you can do with the plugin just so you can get an idea of how it works. This right here is one of the example maps because there actually are a few of them. This is the one that has the information about a lot of different things, but there are a few more specialized ones that I'll show you as well. And as I go through some of the stuff, I want you to keep in mind that all of this is 100% PCG. Nothing here is created with blueprints. Everything all of these patterns and designs are created thanks to the help of this plugin. So you're able to get quite crazy things going and created because of it. For example, this design is created not from a picture, but from a spline. Over here, this web is a basically a Voronoi pattern in three dimensions. And we have some more patterns up here with pathfinding along those patterns. Here's a 2D Voronoi. You can see there's other ways of connecting one point that just connects to other points in an area. There's so many things here. You have lots of ways of doing pathfinding. All of these connections, you can go ahead and do a pathfinding along those connections, as you see here, even in three dimensional space. So you can get really interesting and cool designs with them. You can also make patterns and other things depending on your configuration. Now this might look familiar because this is the Unreal demo material object. And you can see, it has now been translated and used in the PCG graph to give it this kind of design around it. So it all of this is works with sampling even 3D objects to give it different designs on top of it with PCG again. And if I wanted to, I can go in here, I can select any one of these. I can go, it is inside of a level instance. So if I hit edit for the level instance and then reselect it and then hit edit in the level instance again, and then reselect it one more time. I now selected that specific PCG graph. And then I press Control E. I'll go ahead and open that PCG graph so I can actually just see what it is. So here you can see it has the new PCG EX nodes. It has also a subgraph. And if I open it in here, here is the full graph. So if you were curious, how is this designed to recreate it for yourself and try it out? All of these are available to see what they are and how they're made. And then you can go in and figure out, okay, well, what happens when I tweak the radius? What happens when I tweak the scale here, etc. Over here, we have a bunch of basically curves, but it also showing you where the tangents are on all of these, where the point is and where the tangent goes. Then there's stuff like this, where you can create connections between the points. So you can create a network of points and then create connections between them, which allows you to do things like this, like creating little areas where you have things all connected where you need them to be. And you can also eliminate floating ones later on as well. For example, this giant grid of points is just all connected. You can see there's a line going between every point right next to each other. And then if you wanted to, you could spawn things on the connections or on the original points. You have that flexibility. But as you can see, there's a lot of things here that we can do. And honestly, I haven't even covered all of them. There's just so many of them. But this is just all the ones in this map because this is not even an example map. This just shows you all the categories that are available. There's also this one, which is showing you blob contours. What this is, is if I take this sphere, you'll see it has a radius around it because if I move it a little bit to the right, you can see we have a radius around it. It is detecting the radius, selecting all the points, connecting all those points and making basically an outline of them. It was all fully dynamic thanks to this plugin. If I go too far, just like the ones out here, it goes ahead and separates it out. But if it's close enough, it goes ahead and connects everything. There's something for regions. So you can create region masks and then just move your little selection. And then based on what is below it, it is now selecting the outline of that region, as you can see, and is following the lines and the connections that 
or created below it. So really cool stuff. One thing that I know many people have asked for in the comments is how to create a possibly a city using PCG. And you can see here with PCG EX, there's a way to basically create streets and connections. And then you can use these points and to spawn wherever you'd like your buildings, your roads, etc. Because it is going to go ahead and connect it all. Because it is from a spline that has been drawn out, as you can see. This was more custom and it goes ahead and creates a setup that works for each situation. For those of you that want to create dungeons, this is available as well. As you can see, you can create rooms and connections from room to room. Now it's not a hundred percent perfect for this one. It does have overlap. And if you're wondering, well, I don't want it to go in every single way. That's okay. If you were to come in here and just go to this transform point right here, you can turn off the rotation and then they're all going to be straight up and down, as you can see, nicely in straight lines. So you can actually use this to create some dungeons. You just need to watch out for locations where it does go ahead and slightly overlap. You might need to go and just tweak it a very tiny bit to get around this. There's also things like this, which you can probably use to create buildings along your blocks, where if I go ahead and grab one of these points and just move it over, it'll go ahead and recalculate it and effectively make it look like you could put buildings here. And this is where the buildings would go if they weren't all bold bunched up, but most likely you'd want to put it along the edges, similar to kind of what they were. So you have a way of spreading out buildings and anything else in an interesting pattern here. Not only that, but there's a pathfinding pipe. As you see right here, there's actually no spline. It is done through these spheres or really shapes. And if I move them around, it goes ahead and pathfinds around the objects to make sure it doesn't intersect into them and I can move them around any way I'd like and it goes ahead and path finds as best as it can right through everything. You're also working on a setup or on a spline mesh, you're able to select different meshes. So you can see we have two different kinds of meshes, if not three, and it is able to go ahead and just select a random one, sort of like you would for a regular static mesh spawn. Just in this case, it's for spline meshes, which is pretty awesome. And last but not least, this is something that I would have loved to have before when I was doing my building series. And that is this right here, which allows you to create basically rooms. And the rooms are controlled from these bounding boxes that if I move them around, as you can see, it goes ahead and puts a room there and it puts connections. So really easily, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and customize an entire layout, however I'd like using these and it builds it all the way around, which honestly is a lot more realistic in terms of what you'd probably get than the method that I was using. So as you can see, BCGX is extremely powerful. Now it does have a documentation page, but it is currently work in progress. There's a lot of pictures here missing and they're currently working on bringing it up to date as it wasn't too long ago that it even got added to fab as it was just in their own GitHub prior to that. You can see, you can read about the mesh to clusters and things like that nature what all the inputs and outputs are. But again, this is not for the beginner PCG person. In fact, it's not even really for me at the current level because even I struggle because I'm bad at reading documentation. And this is not a tutorial style documentation. This is just like hard data documentation. Even people like me will probably struggle a little bit to get going with it. So I wanted to give you that fair warning, but I wanted to leave you guys with at least some kind of little tutorial on how to use at least a part of it so you kind of understand some of the things with it. So we're gonna go ahead and create a simple Voronoi pattern and then I'll show you kind of how to debug it and things of that nature. Now for this, of course, you're gonna need to make sure you have your PCG enabled as well as the PCG EX plugin. But again, because this is all advanced, I'm assuming you know how to do that. And then I'm going to right click, go to PCG and create ourselves a PCG graph. This is going to be our PCG underscore 3D Voronoi. I'll go ahead and open it up. And here is gonna be pretty simple, like the default stuff you would normally do, which is input and we're gonna go into a volume sampler. From the volume sampler, I'll just say the voxel size will be something like 1000 by 1000 by 1000. And then from here, I'm going to do a select points and I'm going to cut out half of the points in a 0.5 ratio. And now we can go ahead and actually use some of the new nodes. So if I go ahead and right click, I can search for 3D Voronoi, which gets us a PCGX cluster node Voronoi 3D. Let's go ahead and select it. It takes an input. So we can go ahead and plug that in and it gives us vertices and edges, which both are points, but they're not points. I, I still personally haven't fully grasped what it means vertices versus edges because there's not geometry, it is points, but that's what they have called it. Really what you need to understand is the vertices, the VTX 
is just the points original and then the connections between the points are the edges. Now you cannot do a regular debug here. Instead, there's a new node. If you search for edge debug, you can get PCG EX debug edges and then you can plug in the VTX into VTX and edges into edges. And then if I grab our PCG graph and just drag it out and move it up, you'll see that we now have a little pattern here. It is really hard to see it. And if I want to change the size of this, I don't do it here. Instead, I go under parameter overrides and we can change the radius here to something like 10. And if you want to, we can give it a custom color, let's say red. And now you can see we have a 3D Voronoi pattern. So there you go. We now have ourselves a cool three-dimensional Voronoi pattern. And if I want to, I can now use these points to pathfind. And also, because these are and essentially sort of like points, I can go and drag out of here and do a static mesh spawner. I can add ourselves a mesh entry and let's get ourselves just some regular spheres and we can spawn them right on the vertice, which means everywhere where there's a point, we now have a sphere and we can spawn on the edges a simple cube by adding another static mesh spawner and changing the mesh here to be a cube. And you can see it is now actually spawned a cube at all of these locations. Now it is not facing the correct way relative to the line. We can go ahead and adjust that in the cluster here in the Voronoi 3D section. Under the solidification section, instead of solidification axis none, we will change it to be the X axis. And now you can see all of the cubes are facing the correct way as well. Now, the red lines here are the bounds of the points. So if you wanted to at this point, you can go ahead and scale your object to fit the bounds of those points, and then it will fit perfectly inside of those to basically recreate a 3D actual Voronoi pattern. Now, this is, of course, a very, very, very small, tiny fraction of the full plugin, as you have seen from the examples. But I wanted to show you that not everything in here is 100% super difficult. There are some things that once you kind of understand how certain nodes work, you can get started with it. And there's a lot of it that you can go ahead and use to break things down with. Now, if this plugin is interesting to you guys, please let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to look into it further and try to create some tutorials for you guys if this is something you're interested in. Because I genuinely think that this can revolutionize pretty much PCG. It just needs to be a little bit more user friendly. And hopefully with some time, it will become just that. I want to give a big shout out to my patrons who help support what I do. It really means a lot. And if you'd like to join our community, the link to the Discord will be down below as always. Thank you very much to the patrons again. And if you want to see more awesome PCG tutorials, check out this video right here for one of my favorite PCG features.